Well, the reason why these, this argument isn't settled easily because is because there are other things said in the New Testament that make people believe that Jesus is somehow God. Um, for example, the fact that the New Testament authors on occasion will cite from the Old Testament language about the Lord um, in Hebrew, that word was Yahweh, and they'll take those sentences and apply them to Jesus. Um, of course, they don't. They, ne they never call Jesus Yahweh in the New Testament, um, but they nevertheless will take Old Testament passages that in the original text refer to Yahweh, and then they'll use them in the Greek translation to refer to Jesus. Um, so there are some things that motivate some people, move some people to believe that somehow the New Testament authors um, will are, are trying to identify Jesus as, as the one Lord that Christ was talking about in that uh, in that passage. Now, I agree. If you identify Jesus with Yahweh, this turns this whole story into nonsense. Okay, so I think Jesus' way of talking about God becomes nonsense if you identify him with Yahweh. Uh, because, for example, if you look in the Old Testament, Yahweh is an I. It is one person. Okay, here's another problem with this talk about one what and three who's. In Isaiah chapter 42, Yahweh says very clearly, I am Yahweh, that is my name. Okay, this is like if I were to say, I am Stephen, or I am Carlos, or I am whatever, that is my name. Okay, so Yahweh is a name, is a personal name, just like Stephen, or or Dale, or Carlos, or whatever, that refers to an individual, something that can refer to itself with the, with the personal pronoun, I. Now, if you were to say that Jesus is Yahweh, well, Jesus obviously is a person, he is an individual that can refer to himself as I. If you were to say that Jesus is Yahweh, that's the same thing as saying that Mark Twain is Samuel Clemens or Superman is Clark Kent because Yahweh is a personal name and Jesus is a personal name. So when you take personal names and put them together in a sentence, this name is that name, uh, that's the same as identifying names as referring to the same person. So if you say that Jesus and Yahweh are the same person, who then is this father that Jesus keeps talking about? Either he's talking about himself before he becomes incarnate, which is a form of modalism, or else he's there is a father beyond Yahweh, and there's a God even beyond the God of the Jews, which, again, is a heretical idea. Um, it seems to me that the way Jesus talks about God, he cannot be Yahweh, because the way Yahweh is talked about in the Old Testament, Yahweh is an individual. He's an I. Um, now, there are, again, even here, there are complications, because there's this whole business about the two powers in heaven and the angel of the Lord and so on. So in all of these instances, there are going to be complicated matters that make the discussion difficult. Okay, so um, even if I think Trinitarianism is wrong, I don't think it's obviously ridiculous. I think that, you know, there are sophisticated and, and clever arguments that can be brought in defense of Trinitarianism. Um, but at the end of the day, I do agree that it's false. I do think that it's an inappropriate reading of the New Testament. Um, and I think that Trinitarians tend to prefer things that are obscure um, and hard to make sense of, and they somehow privilege those things in the biblical language, uh, rather than trying to make sense of them in light of what is simpler. I think it's, um, I think it's simpler to say that there's God and then there's Christ, and Christ is subordinate to God, rather than to use this murky language of, well, there's the Yahweh, and then there's the angel of Yahweh, but somehow the, the angel of Yahweh is Yahweh, and you have this, you know, plurality within unity, and it seems to me like the Trinitarian arguments try to milk these ambiguities and these unclarities in the Old Testament, you know, allow for them to be unclear about whether there's one God or three gods. So they, they benefit from the, these murky dimensions of the Bible to try to support their own doctrine, which in very various ways is, is murky. Uh, so that's why this argument is not easily settled, because the New Testament or the Bible is very big. There are a lot of things found within it. And depending on where you look and what's, what pieces of evidence you prefer, you prefer or, or um, uh, prioritize, you can come up with one or the other doctrine. So you have this, right? The Son is Yahweh, the Father is Yahweh, the Spirit is Yahweh. Three Ys equals one Y. I mean, that's a clear contradiction or three X equals one X, we could say. So they have turned the, the divine name, the Tetragrammaton, four letters. Again, we're just saying Yahweh or Jehovah for the sake of the audience who knows that pronunciation, they, they have turned the divine name as they have turned the title God, right? Where they can say these clear contradictory things, you know, from the get-go, although the Cappadocian fathers, if you read them carefully, they admitted that they were teaching about three gods. I think it was Gregory of Nyssa or Nisa who, who made an example of, look, if we have James, Peter, and Paul, and we say they're three men, why can we 
say three gods. But then they realized their folly and said, oh, wait, maybe we shouldn't say that. How can they get continue to get away with this? Using now the divine name as equal to three individuals, three persons, yet say, no, no, we're not saying there are three Yahwehs, three gods. No, no, it's one Yahweh, one God. How is this continuing to be perpetrated upon a seemingly asleep public? I do think that the problem with this kind of language is that, like you said, Yahweh is a personal name. Yahweh is like Stephen. Okay, so if you just substitute Yahweh for Stephen, as a ridiculous example. If you were to say the son is Stephen, the father is Stephen, and the spirit is Stephen, what do you mean? Do you mean that Stephen is playing these three roles of father, son, and spirit? Do you mean that uh, all of these three individuals have the name Stephen, but they're not the same Stephen? Um, you know, I, I think part of the part of the uh, problem here is that we are using terms that are not names for us. Yahweh doesn't sound like a name for us because we don't, we're using these terms in a sense that does not, you know, without an awareness of the fact that they're a name, we get confused, right? So Yahweh sounds like a title. The son is Yahweh. The father is Yahweh. The spirit is Yahweh. That sounds like a title. Just like we might say Donald Trump is president, Joseph Biden is president, um, Barack Obama is president, whatever. Um, so one of the one of the problems here is the fact that people are not aware of the fact that Yahweh is a personal name. It's an individual's name. It's the name that you use to designate an individual. In the second place, I do think very much that whether intentionally or not, I think that they play games, and I think that they they try to benefit from from the ambiguity and the uncertainty of their their doctrinal formulations. For example, you have the Cappadocians who say that there are three persons. Uh, these three persons are distinct from one another somehow, you know, so whenever you talk to Trinitarians about these things, every question you have, they'll give you one line answer. Okay. How do you not have three gods? Because there's one nature. Okay. In what sense do you have one nature, one concrete nature? How do you have three persons if it's one concrete nature? Well, because they're the personal relations uh, distinguish them. How do you have personal relations without having composition? Well, because it's simple. It's always one line answers. I find in my experience because this, you know, it's like trying to, it's like trying to take in a figure that has a lot of different sides, right? So let's take you have a cube, it has six sides. Let's say you have a big thing that has like a, a thousand sides, right? You're only ever shown one side at a time <laughs> uh, and you keep going from one side to the next side. Um, but eventually you run into contradictions. You follow the line of reasoning eventually and you get, you get something that contradicts something else. And then that's what happens. You get the appeal to mystery, okay? So you get a one-line answer to one question, a one-line answer to another question, a one-line answer to another question, and you keep doing that for a while, and then eventually you realize that the answer to a later question contradicts something said to uh, an earlier question, and then you have the appeal to mystery, okay? I think a lot of Trinitarians play games because they don't just jump here from the start. They try to answer your questions with one-liners, um, and they don't just admit from the start that we have an apparent contradiction here. Uh, they try to uh, they try to mitigate the problem and and give answers to your questions at first. But if you follow the line of questioning, eventually you come to a, an apparent contradiction and then they appeal to mystery. Um, why do they keep getting away with this? Part of it is rhetoric um, because, again, they don't just say from the start that there is an apparent contradiction. They answer all your questions, even though if you ask them enough questions after a while, you will get apparent contradictions. Um, so they're very selective in how they talk about things and they only ever answer one question at a time and they never give you a complete picture. Um, if you ask them for a complete picture, they'll say, what are you expecting me to explain the Trinity to you, right? Games like this. So that's one thing, the, the, the very rhetorically, uh, shifty and tricky way in which these discussions take place. In the second place, uh, this, again, there's this appeal to mystery and there's this appeal to, well, listen, do you think that you can understand God? Obviously, you cannot. And so, what does it matter if our, you know, our, our formulas about God are apparently contradictory? God is bigger than us. Again, I don't, I don't buy that answer either, because to the extent that you can't understand God, your formula is groundless, right? You are claiming to understand God in saying what you're saying. You're saying that He's three persons in one nature. Okay. So, if you can't understand God, then you can't make that statement either. Um, do you understand what you are saying when you say that He's three persons in one nature? Either you do or you don't. If you do understand what you're saying, then you understand God. Okay. Uh, or at least you can't understand God in principle. If you don't understand what you're saying when you say that God is three persons in one nature, then how can you know that this way of talking is appropriate for talking about God? You know, it's like asking, is this, you know, it's like if I were to say to you, Carlos, and I'll give you a word in um, in Romanian, I will say, okay, this thing over here, you know, do you agree that this uh, this road over here is strabatut? All right, and if you don't know what strabatut means in Romanian, how can you agree that it's appropriate to call the road <laughs> that, that word or not, right? Is this word, is that road strabatut or not? Well, if you don't know what that word means, 
then you can't agree to using it. So if so you don't know what the formulas mean, again, you can't agree to using them in describing God. You know, as he, as he is speaking and trying to explain this, I cannot but help to come to this conclusion. You say follow the, you know, we, we have followed the science. Well, let's follow, follow the argumentations. As I'm listening to you, I can only think of the word deception. When you know what you're doing, right, and you're in a discussion setting and you corner, as we say, the argument, right? The debate, you corner it, but then they, you go here or you go there and there's an inability to recognize when you're cornered and, and to retreat to mysteries and so forth. I can only think of, of deception on the part of, of these, at least the, the so-called high-minded teachers and leaders of the Trinitarian movement. Again, that, that's just my observation. I don't need you to comment on that. 